Another thing that we sometimes hear is that um, uh, this was actually on a newscast recently. Over 3,000 people have died from the COVID vaccine. Is this true? Um, no, this is not true. Um, you can say that uh, 3,000 people have been reported to our safety systems, what's called the VAERS database, after a COVID vaccine. There's a big difference between you know, from a COVID vaccine and after a COVID vaccine. And I, I think if I asked most of you to think about that for a few seconds, you'd be able to come up with why that's so different. But let me help with that. If you take a look at uh, 10 million Americans and uh, follow them over two months after you give them something completely benign, like a sugar pill, and watch them for two months, which is what, shine a spotlight on them and see what happens to 10 million typical Americans. Um, about 4,000 of them will have a heart attack. About 1,700 of them will have a blood clot of some form or another. Almost 4,000 will have a stroke. Almost 10,000 will be diagnosed with a new diagnosis of cancer. And almost 14,000 will die. Now, we are vaccinating about 10 million people a week, actually a little more than that. So if we gave them a completely safe vaccine, something that was 100% safe, and followed them over the next couple of months, there will be four, we, we should expect 4,000 heart attacks, 1,700 blood clots, 4,000 strokes, 10,000 cases of cancer, 14,000 deaths. So it's, it's vitally important to try and drill down, like, was it just the background of what happens to people because people get sick and people die and people have bad things happen to them, or was it from the vaccine? And if you think about who got vaccinated at first, it was often the frail, sick, elderly people in nursing homes. I mean, in, in the nursing home where I'm a medical director, we had several people in hospice that were vaccinated. Of course, a number of them died over the next, uh, you know, one to two months. So the only way to kind of get at this, like, is this a really a problem from the vaccine is you have to have a control group. You have to compare it to a similar group of people that are unvaccinated. And of course, that's what's done in the clinical trials. That's usually in the tens of thousands. But to be fair, if you're looking for problems that may happen in maybe out of one out of 100,000 or one out of a million, you need to look at a lot more people. And those become uh, unfeasible in a clinical trial, which are very expensive and very hard to do. But we have other monitoring systems that do just this on an ongoing rolling basis as vaccine rolls out. One, one of the most powerful ones is something called the Vaccine Safety Data Link System. And if people have an interest, I can get more into that. But we have on a rolling basis, weekly checks in a big system of healthcare systems with 12 million people enrolled in their electronic medical records, where we have vaccinated people compared to unvaccinated people for a plethora of different problems to see if there's any signal popping up. And so far, there isn't. 